Most of us have squeezed children or pets into a car before, but Ford's third generation Tourneo Connect compact MPV can comfortably take much more. From kite surfing equipment to the school run, this is a car that aims to help families get a little more out of life. And in creating it, the Blue Oval brand has received more than a little help from Volkswagen. Ford hasn't just borrowed a Volkswagen chassis here, but also engines too. Though to disguise the fact, the Blue Oval's given the units concerned its own EcoBoost and EcoBlue branding. Ultimately, what it all boils down to is that you get the same power plant choice that would be available to you with a comparable Volkswagen Caddy MPV. This means Tornio Connect customers get to choose from either a 1.5 litre EcoBoost turbo petrol unit with 114 PS, or the alternative 2 litre Eco Blue diesel we're trying here, available in 112 PS, a unit which wasn't available at the time of our autumn 2022 test, or as in this case, with a more satisfying 122 PS output. All models feature six speed manual transmission as standard, with the alternative of a seven speed power shift dual clutch automatic gearbox with steering wheel mounted paddles and a sport mode, which is what we're trying here. Choose that auto and your car can also be specified with intelligent adaptive cruise control with lane centering, which provides assisted driving for accelerator, braking and steering functions to reduce stress on highways or in stop and start traffic. Volkswagen isn't currently offering four-wheel drive on Caddy MPVs, but Ford has decided to make it available here for the first time in a Tornio Connect. The system automatically distributes torque between the wheels depending on driving conditions and surfaces, helping drivers maintain progress in more challenging conditions. All-wheel drive is available on models fitted with the 2.0-litre 122 PS EcoBlue diesel engine and a six-speed manual gearbox and doesn't compromise either interior space or loading height. Engine undershield protection is available to support customers who frequently drive on rough surfaces. The engines are all Volkswagen sourced, which means they're fundamentally efficient. Most customers will probably want the 122 PS version of the 2 litre TDI diesel here, which in Eco Blue manual form manages up to 57.6 mpg on the combined cycle and CO2 emissions from 128 grams per kilometre. It's 55.4 mpg and 136 grams per kilometre for the auto. For the 1.5 litre EcoBoost petrol, the figures are 44.1 mpg and 146 grams per kilometre for the manual and 42.2 mpg and 152 grams per kilometre for the auto. Those are for the L1 body shape. Think in terms of losing around 5% on those figures if you choose this slightly heavier Gran Tornio L2 body shape. Auto start-stop technology is standard across the range, as you'd expect. And the diesel engine features the Volkswagen Group pioneered twin dosing system that injects AdBlue upstream of two selective catalytic converters to help reduce nitrogen oxides. This Tornio Connect comes with the usual Ford three year or 60,000 mile warranty and a year of roadside assistance. You could pay more to extend this cover to either five years and 100,000 miles or eight years and 100,000 miles. There's a choice of two body lengths here, a short wheelbase L1 model with the option of three seating rows and the long wheelbase Gran Tornio L2 variant that features them as standard. The previous version of this model looked very much like a van with windows, but this design has a much more of a passenger car vibe. It's more sculpted exterior, offering a sportier, more lifestyle orientated look, particularly if you go for this crossover style active version. You don't have to look very far for Volkswagen touches though. You even get a Ford branded shiny Volkswagen key and the Wolfsburg influence is even more evident inside. Ford has added its badge to the steering wheel and rebranded the glass fronted central infotainment screen, but otherwise the cabins from a caddy. Overall though, it's all a big step forward from this model's predecessor and there's certainly more of a solid quality feel than you'd normally expect from a family Ford.
Avoid base trim and you'll get a center infotainment screen of 10 inches in size. It's fitted out with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring, navigation, voice and gesture control, and a six speaker DAB audio system, plus a Ford Pass Connect modem to help you stay connected while on the road. The top configurable 10.25 inch digital instrument cluster though is reserved for the priciest sport models. Whatever the layout, your main area of focus curves around your sight line, the section for the central monitor flowing into the instrument binnacle layout, which you view through the spokes of a smart three-spoke capacitive steering wheel. This adjusts widely like the supportive seats, and these can be specified in ergonomic form with extended leg supports and four-way electric lumbar adjustment certified by the AGR, or the German Campaign for Healthy Back Society. And as you'd want, there's lots of cabin storage space, notably at the base of the center stack and between the seats. Plus, both the door bins and the glove box are of a very decent size. There's a wide overhead shelf and further storage behind the instrument binnacle. Plus, if you choose the right model, you get extra touches like useful under seat drawers and a diddy little removable waste bin in the passenger door pocket. Right, time to take a seat in the second row. Where, predictably, it's comfortable for two, but might be a bit of a squash for three because you don't get three individual chairs. There's lots of headroom though, plus a low center tunnel, twin USB-C ports, overhead reading lights, and decent bins in the sliding doors. The seat bases don't slide, but the backs do recline. Most models have these useful seat back tables too and you can specify the glass in the sliding doors to open. As we said earlier, a set of third row chairs is an option, but as mentioned, we wouldn't recommend it for the standard wheelbase L1 model. That option makes more sense with this long wheelbase Gran Tornio L2 version. Getting to the third row requires a two-part operation, pulling on this black strap to fold the seat back onto the base, then using the red strap to angle the base forward, clearing space for third row access. In the third row, there's much more space for knees and heads than would usually be the case with any seven-seater SUV that isn't ridiculously large. Provided you've chosen this Gran Tornio variant, even adults could fit without too many complaints. What about luggage space? Well, in the standard wheelbase L1 model in five-seat format, you're looking at 1,213 litres of space, which grows to 1,720 litres with the L2 Gran Tornio body shape model, thanks to its extra 353 millimetres of length. Fold the second row seats, and it really does get van-like, 2,556 litres of space in the standard L1 version, or 3,105 with the Gran Tornio L2 model. Carrying longer items or bulky leisure equipment is facilitated by maximum load lengths of 2,265 millimetres behind the first row of seats, 1,452 behind the second, and 629 millimetres behind the third for L2 variants. It's 1,913 millimetres, 1,100 millimetres, and 317 millimetres for L1 versions. There's no doubt that this is a much more car-like compact people carrier than the previous generation Tornio Connect. Ford's taken what's good about Volkswagen engineering here, primarily the Caddy model's MQB platform, but added its own spin on it. Models of this sort have always specialised in offering everything you need and nothing you don't. This one, though, sugars that concept a small but significant amount. And as a result, sense and sensibility just got that little more desirable.